Hi and welcome back to Horse Tricks. I'm glad you're here today. Well, in this episode, we're gonna take you behind the scenes at one of the world's most celebrated horse shows and dinner theaters, Arabian Nights in Kissimmee, Florida. We're gonna give you a peek into the training of our specialty horses. The trick we'll train this week is the breakdown, another version of the bow. Stay tuned for a fun episode of Horse Tricks coming your way. Well, I'm really excited to be back at Arabian Nights in Kissimmee, Florida, training the specialty horses, the Liberty Trick and High School horses. And with me here is Mark Miller, the owner of Arabian Nights. Hi, how are you doing Hi. today? Great to be back, Mark. I'm really excited to be working with the horses here. Tell the folks a little bit about Arabian Nights and the dream that has become a reality. Well, uh, I grew up on a very large Arabian horse farm, actually in Maryland, but uh, and so I had a whole history with Arabian horses and they're very versatile, they do a whole lot. And we also did a lot of exhibitions with them like the chariot race and that type of thing. And I'd seen so many great horses over the period of time that I was growing up that eventually I thought, wouldn't it be great to establish one place where they could be? Because you as a performer know that as time has gone on, the surfaces that horses get to perform on with traveling shows has gotten worse and worse. And so we built a facility here to be able to have the greatest horses in the world and the greatest performers and the greatest trainers. Thank you very much for coming back. <laughs> Thank you, Mark, that was nice. And this actually is the 25th anniversary this year, 2013, of Arabian Nights. That's as a true. dinner That's theater true. and horse show and celebrated around the world and always voted one of the top dinner shows in, uh, in this area. So it's right. really exciting. Right. It's it really is, exciting. it's fun. So what's really fun at Arabian Nights is not only doing the high school and dressage stuff, but also that we get to do trick horses, we do Roman riding, and the bareback act, which is a big feature in the show, the, the somersaulting riders on the horses. Right. Well, one of the other things that I noticed in life was that there are fewer and fewer people who do the great stuff anymore. So this has become a teaching facility. And as you do with your viewers of this show, uh, our trainers here have always been very generous with their knowledge and teaching young kids to come up. And as you say, in the bareback act, we've taught more bareback riders than anyone in the world over the past 25 years. And so it's really great to be able to preserve some of this knowledge as well as to put on a show that people love. Oh, absolutely. And that show happens every night, 365 days a year. And for more information, you can go to ArabianNights.com. Well, the viewer email question this week comes from Kim in Oklahoma. Kim writes that she's actually trained her horse to bow by holding a treat down here and getting the horse to bow down, but that it won't stay down once she moves. Well, this is a pretty common problem. And actually the bow is the most requested trick we train. So it's fine to do it in any manner you like, as long as one, you stay safe, two, you get a consistent result, and three, you don't hurt the horse. So if you can get the horse to stay down, that's fine. I prefer the method I use of standing right in the position where I'm gonna train the trick, using my hobble to get it started, using all my cues, bow down, whoa, and then the release cue, all right. That way, once I'm finished with this, I can actually put my foot in the stirrup and bow to mount the horse. So there are a lot of ways to do it. Find the way that works for you. Make sure you stay safe, be consistent, don't hurt the horse. Take a look at my prior episodes because I've covered this in depth and it'll give you a great model to train your horse by. Well, as I said, we're gonna give you a peek into the training of our specialty horses in this segment. We always talk about a great foundation. So as always, I'm gonna start out by encouraging you to, to review the principles of training. They can be found on my website. Post those in your barn. Now the horses we're gonna be working with today Lady Dancer's here, and we have a couple other of our senior riders that are from Arabian Nights here to help us out. And we'll be working on high school riding. Now we talked about this with my father a couple episodes ago. High school comes from the French word haute école, high school, referring to a higher level of schooling. High school actually predates dressage training. High school incorporates dressage elements with some other elements, including tricks, and higher schooling, in some cases, even the Capriole, Lavade, the airs above the ground. Now, some of you may wonder how to get started with high school riding. Again, you wanna start at the beginning and work your way into this. This is an advanced discipline. 
So start with a great foundation. Put a great foundation on your horse. We always start that with a little snaffle bridle. Just a basic snaffle bridle when we first start bridling our horses. And in other episodes, you see me work with a training surcingle. But this is how we get started. As we advance and we're looking for the horse to, to be more responsive from the bit and legs, we're going to actually move into what is called a pelham bridle. It's two reins, a double rein, so that we have the curb and the snaffle, but yet still one bit. When we really get advanced in some horses, we're going to actually use a double bit, double rein bridle. But you always want to start here, and your horse will give you an idea, reading your horse, when it's time to move into a more advanced bit. So right now, I'm going to get mounted up on Lady Dancer, and I'm going to work with some of our high school horses and show you what that looks like. Well, now it's time to get back on Lady Dancer. So I'm going to get on the easy way. Good girl, ho. Just like that. And I've been joined out here this, this morning with two of our senior riders from Arabian Nights. We have Zach and Diana. Diana is riding a beautiful little Arabian sandpiper, and Zach is riding confetti, a saddlebred. So go ahead, we're gonna go ahead and take off, guys, and start riding down the wall, and we'll start to show you some of the maneuvers. Now, both of these horses are working in the double rein bridles that I talked to you about, and what happens is, as we demonstrated in an episode with my dad, we really want to use the curb and the snaffle in the way that we hold our hands. We ride on one or the other. Different maneuvers require different uses of the reins and the bit. We also have small spurs on and we use our legs quite heavily. Our goal in our performances is actually to refine the cues to the point that they're barely visible to the audience, but we get a great response from the horse a seamless performance of horse and rider. Both Zach and Diana are excellent riders. So let's get started showing you some of the fun stuff we're doing. All right, if you guys will go ahead and come down and up the wall, and we'll do some side passes and the shoulders in. You can do those at a canter and a trot for me. You see the nice collection in these horses? Again, we, we're trying to ride as light as possible. Our goal is to be as light with the horse as possible, but achieve that beautiful collection. Excellent. Sandpiper and Diana move along really nicely. They have a good relationship. Zach and Confetti move along beautifully. Confetti is one of our senior, or one of our horses in the show right now that performs quite a bit, but we're still schooling him a little more. Sandpiper is learning and will be introduced into the new show. Beautiful cantering half pass there. Excellent. All right. Now we're, when they come back around, we're going to ask the horses, when you come back down the wall, to go into a passage. A passage is a very collected floating trot. It's a dressage movement. There's a nice kind of a high trot from Confetti. Absolutely beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. Diana is going to try to put Sandpiper there. We go into a nice passage. Just a beautiful floating movement. Again, Sandpiper is one of our newer horses, so he's still learning. And I thought this would give you a good peek into how we accomplished it. There we go. Beautiful. Few steps. And that's how we train. We ask for those few steps. Good. And there's another nice passage. Confetti actually almost does a high trot, which is where instead of the legs being under the horse, actually extend out in, in the same floating motion. Now what's important as they're doing these maneuvers is that the rear end of the horse works as well. Our, we're always encouraging the horse's rear end to come up under them and stay very engaged. That's the propulsion to move the horses forward and get that beautiful movement on the front. Sandpiper's still figuring that out. There we go. Diana's very nice, easy with Sandpiper and asking for just a few steps. And we'll get Lady Dancer to do a nice passage for us.
Very nice. Good girl. All right, now we're going to work on the march. The march and the three-step. This is something I get asked about a lot. And we want to show you how to do this. So we'll have you guys stop there for a minute, and then we'll start some marches. The way we train the march on the ground is we actually touch the horse's leg with our little dressage whip, and we're looking for the horse to do exactly that. So we'd be on the ground asking them to strike out like that. We're then going to ask for the other leg. Some horses will do this very easily. Others, it'll take a little while. If you tickle them enough, we'll get the march. Now, as I've told you before, we don't want to get our cues confused. So while a bow or lay down cue is from the knee down, we want the march cue to be right up here by the shoulder. And that also gives us the extension that we're looking for instead of the horse doing a paw type thing. So we really want a nice extension from the horse like that. That's pretty. So what we do then is move that under the saddle with the help of someone on the ground. And then we start training it under the saddle with a combination of our whip, our spurs, legs, and bit. So we're going to go ahead and have them march off down the rail for us, and I'll follow you guys. And what we're going to ask them to do when you're learning the march is to go ahead, start walking. Don't try to start your march from a standstill, because we want the horse to have a forward movement. And again, we want their rear end to move along under them as well. So there's Zach getting a nice march. He's using the, the cue on the bit, and he's also using his legs. Excellent. Now, Diana is going to walk off, and she's just going to ask for a leg now and then. We don't care if he actually does a complete march right now. She just wants to keep him moving. The, the key is to keep your horse moving forward and ask for that march. Zach, try a three-step and then move it right into a march. Does Sandpiper, uh, does Confetti three-step? Good. Again, you see how the horse sits back a little bit on their haunches to be able to execute this. They got to keep that back end moving forward. Beautiful. Now, one of the things Arabian Nights is known for is their high school horses, the higher level of schooling that you don't see at a lot of the other horse performances you go to. So it's really important to us to make sure our horses have some of the highest training and do a great job with it. We start with beautiful horses, and then we spend a lot of time on the training. We have a great facility to do just that. Beautiful. We're really excited about Sandpiper. He's going to be a great ad new addition to our show when we put our, together our new show in the fall at Arabian Nights. So you've gotten a little peek into the training of our dancing horses. Do you guys bow? Come on up here and let's finish this segment as we always like to with a Nyan cub right up here, Diana. A nice formal bow. I'll do the breakdown and you can do the bow. Ready? And here we go. A nice bow by our beautiful horses here at Arabian Nights. I love traveling around the country with my horses performing and facilitating clinics. I get to meet a lot of great people. If you're interested in hosting a clinic and you have a facility or a location, let me know. I'd be happy to discuss it with you. There's a lot of options available. We can do trick horse training, liberty training, dancing high school horse training, and or general horsemanship. So lots of options available. I'd love to come to you and facilitate a clinic. Well, the trick this week we're going to train is the breakdown which is also sometimes called the prayer. And as always, I've enlisted the help of Lady Dancer to help me demonstrate it. We're gonna show you what this looks like. I'm gonna ask Lady to do a nice breakdown for us. Beautiful, just like that. Excellent, that's the breakdown. Now we're gonna show you how to train it. So we've demonstrated the breakdown or the prayer with Lady Dancer. Now we're going to train it with a beautiful Arabian horse, Iberian. Now as always, I want to tell you what kind of tools and tack you're going to need for this. So we've actually got Iberian tacked up because we also want to try this under saddle. But we do have his halter on. We want to have a lead rope. We actually have our single hobble on his left leg. I've got a helper, Zach, one of our senior trainers, and he's got a lunge line that we're going to use to attach to the hobble. 
I've got my little dressage whip, and as always, I've got a pocket full of treats. So the first thing we want to do is ask Zach. We're going to go ahead and attach that. Now again, if you've watched the show, this is a more advanced trick. So if your horse is dancing around at all, you don't want to be using hobbles or doing this type of thing. We do not want anybody to get hurt. Always reference by principles of training. This horse has a great foundation. He's one of our senior dancing horses here. He's getting ready to retire before too long. But he actually has a sore knee. So we don't want to bow him anymore. So we're actually training this trick on him so that he can still do some type of a bow or curtsy in the show without having to hurt his knee. This is not a bow you want to mount from because the horse has no stability. Their legs are going to be straight out. It would actually create a problem. So please don't bow, don't mount from this trick. So now I've got my uh, lead rope right in the center hooked into the halter. We don't want to use the bridle for this trick. We don't want to hook into that. So Zach, you're going to go back up, right? He's going to stay right in front of the horse for me. Now, because this horse already bows, his job is going to be to keep the legs straight out instead of underneath him. If your horse has never done this before, he may want to bow. He may want to put his legs underneath him. We're going to just try to get him to stretch those legs out forward. So we're going to try it with one hobble and see how that works. So I'm going to take my, my lead rope and actually put it between his legs just like that. So far, so good. I've got a treat. To begin with, I'm going to bring the treat right down here between his legs. Again, I need to caution you. This is a trick you're going to train with a horse who's got a great foundation because you're going to see me come down here near the horse. If this horse jumped around, it's an easy place to get hurt. I feel very confident with this horse. So here's what we're going to do. I'm going to pull the lead rope a little bit. Zach's going to hold on to that hobble for me. And now he's going to set that leg down. Good, just like that. Ho, ho. All right. That was excellent. Remember the release cue. I kept the horse down there until I was ready for him to get up. So let's do that one more time. We're going to walk him forward a little bit here. Ho, oh, right there. I'm going to try to stay out of the way a little bit more. Hang on. Wait for us, Siberian. Ho. Oh, he's ready. All right. Ho. Oh. I want to show you how we're going to do it with our little whip now and what the cue looks like. So I'm going to take my lead rope. He's going to pull that hobble out for me. I'm going to tap him right here. Pull your hobble out. Whoops. There we go. And it looks just like that. All right. Excellent. That's what the breakdown looks like. Now, when we come back, I want to show you how we're going to apply the breakdown in a few different ways and have some fun with it. So stay tuned. We'll be right back with more horse tricks. So I'm back on Lady Dancer because I want to show you some of the fun you can have with the breakdown. So from a mounted position, I can actually ask Lady Dancer to do a nice breakdown for us. Beautiful. I'm going to ask her to do that again. She came up a little fast. Ho. All right, good. And what I'm doing, the cue for that on the other side is I'm actually taking my whip and touching her right under the belly just behind the girth. The bow for the the cue for the bow is right up here on the knee. The cue for the breakdown is actually behind the stirrup, just right up under there. So we don't want to get those confused. We want to make sure that's consistent. Now, as you progress and you want to have some more fun, we've showed you how to get your horse on a pedestal. So you can combine some of these things. Put your horse up on the pedestal and then ask it to do a nice breakdown. Pull your reins open, tap under the belly, Good, just like that. Let's do one more, lady. Tap under the belly, pull your reins open, and you get a beautiful breakdown. You can even have a little fun with a salute on the pedestal. All fun tricks you can train as you start putting the tricks that we've trained together. Our training tip for the day is sharing our training secrets. I'm asked often by other horse trainers and owners if I'll share my secrets. I actually enjoy sharing my knowledge with others and have done that through my Horse Tricks television series and had a lot of fun doing it. There is really no magic in training. Like everything else in life, you need to spend the time, put the time in to create a great foundation on your horse and you'll find out the sky's the limit. Spend that time 
whatever amount of time it takes for your individual horse to get the great foundation. My website has a lot of information on phase one and phase two training to get that going. And you'll find the rewards will be fantastic. Practice makes perfect. So spend the time, find the program that works for you, set the bar high, don't make excuses, expect good results, and I promise you, you'll find that you have great interactions with your horse and your training. Our training tip for the day. Well, that concludes this episode of Horse Tricks, and it also concludes season one of my Horse Tricks series. I sure hope you've had as much fun as I have. I would like to thank my sponsors, Fresh Fix Odor Control, Shriners Herbal Solution, and Fireborn Leather Gloves for allowing my dream to come true of having this TV series, teaching you how to train your horse to do some fun tricks. I have some exciting things planned in the next few months. You can check that out by my website, HeidiHarriet.com, and sign up for my newsletter. I sincerely thank you for allowing me to be a part of your horse training journey. I hope you'll continue on. And always remember, happiness is horses.